Good morning from the eighth park of our Europe road trip. Today we're here at Legoland Deutschland for our first ever visit. Look at the entrance. This has got to be my favorite ever entrance to a Legoland park. And with it being Halloween as well, you've got all the added decorations, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Um, but yeah, first time coming here for us, really excited to show you everything that this park has to offer. Visited quite a lot of the Legoland parks now, and this is my fifth one. So yeah, I'm excited to see how it compares to the others. And there was a big reason for me wanting to come here this year, and that's the open opening of a new B&M family wing coaster with two inversions. So we're going to check out that. And it's all themed around Lego Mythica as well. Oh, it's so exciting to see Mythica here in Legoland. Yeah, generally. definitely. We're used to it back in uh, Windsor uh, with the Flying Theatre. We have to go the wing coaster here. So we're going to check out that. Uh, it's really cold today, but I'm looking forward to discovering this park and taking you around. It's a weekday. Oh, oh it's on the dragon. dragon. Hey. It's a weekday, so it should be pretty <laughs> quiet. I know. Hey, oh, he's in the background. <laughs> What an amazing moment there to start our day. Yeah, I love how they got the characters out down here at the front Aww. of the park. And look at this, we don't have these for brick or treat back in Windsor, do we? The big spiders. <laughs> They're awesome. Oh, and then you've got the minifigure pumpkin heads as well. And there's the monster party here as well. Look at this, really nice. Park hours today are 10 through until 6 on the website. However, the rides actually close at 5. And uh, yeah, of course, this park opened back in 2002 home to four roller coasters and lots of other Legoland classics. Yeah, the entrance is very different. I like the sign just there as we make our way in. Hopefully this one isn't too hilly. Oh, and this is what we've come for. Look at the concept art. I remember this opening earlier in the year and me saying, I've got to come and ride it this year. We're big fans of the Mythica storyline and theme back in Windsor. So yeah, I'm really excited for the wing coaster. Everything that's going on for Halloween here at Legoland Deutschland, of course, Germany. It's a first opportunity with the monster party. Yeah, here's the entrance to the park. Look at all the witches' hats that are hanging up as well. That's quite different. And yeah, we've never been here before, so we don't know the park layouts or anything. We're just going to kind of go for it. And yeah, have a stroll around. I don't think we have to worry about crowds today. Look at all these spiders. So far, there's a lot more theming for Halloween. And yeah, when you're straight in to, to Miniland just over here, I suppose that's the thing with the park being open technically till six, uh, but rides closing at five, you can explore Miniland um, like, later on after the rides close. So yeah, we'll check this out later. It looks really good, Miniland. Nice photo opportunity as well, but it is so cold. And here's a look at the park maps. Yeah, as you can see, it's quite a large park. Main entrance down here, Miniland. We've got a coaster just down here at the side. The Ninjago area by the looks of it down here. Pirates off to the right. We've got the area based around Mythica at the back. There's an observation tower. You've got the castle with the dragon just over there. Your driving school down this side boat ride they've got a Gerstar Skyfly here too and uh, yeah it looks like a really nice park so we've made our way right to the back of the park and welcome to Lego Mythica here in Germany home to Maximus the flight of the Guardian the B&M wing coaster new for 2023 with two inversions and one of them's over the portal here this looks so cute the track color is just fantastic it's really nice and yeah you've got the same portal as back in Windsor and yeah, like, look at this, very nice. This one's actually got screens and a proper walkthrough underneath because of the inversion that's just above. Got a bit of a pre-queue going on. I didn't know if we were gonna be all right with the temperatures this morning because some of these coasters, when it's this cold, do struggle, of course, to get warmed up. But look at the area. Got the play area here in the middle. Station for the coaster over there. And yeah, look at this, probably the smallest B&M lift hill you've ever seen. There it is right there. <laughs> you got the two drop towers, the fire and ice tower, it's called here instead of free fall. And yeah, literally that's the layout. So you go up the lift hill, down into this helix, which has got some great theming around. And then down and round into that first inversion, we're coming back down over the entrance, around there into the break run. I tell you what, it looks really nice. How sweet is this? It's really weird, like hearing the mythic of music and everything it here. It really is, and all the characters are about. So yeah, they went for this instead of the flying theater, and I'm really excited to get on it. Also, you know me, I like to make sure I've got every B&M roller coaster in Europe, and if I didn't come here this year, I wouldn't be able to go into winter uh, saying I've done that. So yeah, it's my final B&M to ride in Europe, so I'm looking forward to this. 
Oh, they've just turned everybody away from the entrance because it is too cold this morning to operate. Really, they shouldn't be letting people pre-queue like that uh, when they know it's not going to open. But still, um, you know, apparently it was like this yesterday, only a couple of hours into the day because of the temperatures, which is fine from a safety point of view, of course. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, pop back up later on. Fingers crossed we're going to get it there. I'm not too worried yet. Uh, if it was like four o'clock, I wouldn't be. I'm but sure we'll be fine. Definitely. It looks like this is just opening up though now. Temple Expedition. I think this is their version of Laser Raiders. Yeah, it's a dark ride, I believe. Let's go and uh, check it out. Nice facade, a bit more detailed. That's the five minute wait and we're straight on. Yeah, it's an Omni Mover system, this one. Let's go. Big spider. Much better than it's a continually moving ride system. Oh, Sean's beating me. is pretty good actually. It's very similar to the one at Legoland Villa and we visited there for the first time last year. Yeah, you can actually turn yourself around as well, which is cool. Something to like Buzz Lightyear at the Disney parks. You got like the little lever. Little movie side to side. Or oh, should do. How's isn't working. <laughs> band over there with the minifigures, that was cool. Hey! <laughs> Even though this has got the lever, I'm thinking maybe it's been programmed to actually turn into the seams. Quite a short ride though, we're nearly back. Lots of good theming though. Oh, well, you beat me there, Charlotte. Was she good not working? Oh, here we go. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I was getting all the views for you yeah, all. Uh, yeah. All the scenes. Quite a short ride. Very well themed, though. Definitely prefer it to Laser Raiders that you've got back at Legoland Windsor. Well, mainly because of the ride system. Omni Mover keeps on moving, so it means really should have a better capacity, better throughputs. What I've noticed about this park so far, walking up through it, uh, is the themed areas seem really good. It's like this one. Uh, it's really nice, all the details, and we're going to show you all around the park. Oh, look at the small little canoes ride. <laughs> Very heavily themed. Like all the trough around at the side, which is cool. Oh, who remembers when Windsor used to have these, where the Castle Hotel is being built now? <laughs> A little car ride. Look, I was just reading the map whilst he's going around there. Oh, getting squirted by the elephant as well. That's nice, and all the trees, lots of landscaping. And yeah, they've got quite a large flume ride over on this side. I was about to jump on it, but it's not open yet. They must still be ruining the pre-start checks. But look at this. Like the boats on there look a bit like Valhalla. The soaks, <laughs> how wet the boats are. Yeah, this does look like a soaker. Like, I'd like to do it. This might be one for near the end of the day that I can get changed after. Our hotel's like 10 minutes down the road from here. I'd like to do it, because I've never seen it before. Has it got like dark ride scenes and stuff? I'm not sure, but it looks like a soaker. So yeah, I probably will give it a go, but later on, because I do want to see what it's like. We won't be able to film on ride though. Of course, with it being a Merlin Park, on ride filming is quite limited. You got a classic rocking tug. Just over here too. Lots of decor and lots of little Lego figures around the park too. The theming around the park is brilliant. There's like figures everywhere. Yeah, there is. And also a lot of rock work. And yeah, it's very nice. Seems to lack audio in quite a few places. However, audio is guaranteed with the pirate band just over here. They've also got a splash battle here in the Pirates area. I was going to say they're brave riding it when it's only five degrees this morning, but really there's nobody squirting them because there's nobody else on it. And there is a shark spinning like round. Yeah, it's quite good. <laughs> I like the big school rock down there at the back and also the castle building. It looks like the queue line just over there. Yeah, it's pretty good. Doesn't look like any dark ride scenes or anything. I think it's all just outside here, but yeah, very nice. Look at the size of this Ninjago area. It's absolutely massive, like all the rocks around. You've got the play area in the middle, like where you can build things out of Lego. 
and then Jargo the ride. Yeah, we're going on another dark ride, why not? They've also got a flat ride to the left. That looks interesting. We'll have a look at that afterwards. Here it is, nice building. And yeah, we probably know it's not quite as tall as like the version at Windsor. It's more kind of spread out, but I prefer this. It's better themed. Let's go and make our way on. Ninja, I'll go the ride. Yeah, another dark ride. Here's a look at the queue line. I like all the windows and how that's been done. All the lanterns as well. All the planting. Just looks a lot more space. You know, you don't feel as cramped in on this one. Something I have noticed about this park is it massively lacks audio. It's like in here, like I can't hear anything playing at all. Like it's really quiet. Here we go, We've got our hand action going. <laughs> Bit of on ride footage there from Ninjago the Rise. I've seen our vlogs from Lego Land Windsor before. I am not a massive fan of this, but I think I've finally mastered. I got a better score than Sean. Yeah, I think you know what you're doing now. I'm still not a fan. It's hurt me arm. I was like this all the time, but I did get a good score. You did, like, <laughs> but yeah, it is a nice ride. Uh, obviously, you do wear 3D glasses on there, very screen focused, um, but there is some nice scenes throughout as well. But yeah, we've got a flat ride next door. Let's go have a look at this. So this is called Lloyd's Spinjitzu Spinner. And as you can see, it's a flat ride built under this lovely pagoda. And yeah, you actually go upside down. I think you can control it with the buttons just on here. See, I'm going to give this a go. Are you coming on? Oh, no. I won't be spinning it too much. <laughs> a ride at Legoland that Charlotte won't go on. No, I won't go on this. Well, you can stay off and get some footage. I will indeed. Hey, here we go. I won't be able to film on this one. So yeah, let's go and have our rides and uh, Charlotte will show it in action. Now this one definitely isn't for me because I know that Sean would be doing this and spinning round loads. This is really strange. So you control this all by yourself. You can go forward, you can go backwards, you can hang upside down, or you can just say normal. Very cool idea. Go forwards or backwards, You can hang upside down. Very strange. You can see Sean's keep going round and round and round. I'd have been sick coming off this. <laughs> really uncomfortable this is. This is strange. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go on. Not the most comfortable that, but still nice to have a ride at Legoland that takes you upside down. I and mean, we don't have it at Windsor. And here you've got a few here, because obviously you've got the new wing coaster with the two inversions. That ride I've just been on. And the Gerstar Skyfly I'll check out later. I like this just over here, it's like the filming of vlog. Or more like a movie. <laughs> Moving along the track just here. And here we've got the big Lego race coming up next, which is our first coaster. The good news is it now seems like it's warming up. It's going to be 13 degrees this afternoon. It was five this morning, so you can see why the wing coaster wasn't open. And yeah, here's a look at the big Lego race. Yeah, it's a Mac Rides Wild Mouse. Been here since the start of this park back in 2002. Advertised on 10 minutes. Yeah, we're going to give this a go. was only about a 10 minute wait there for the big Lego race. It was running very slow that was this morning. I was expecting so much 
so much more from that, but it was so slow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was trimmed quite heavily anyway. We are at Legoland after all, but I think because of the temperature, it was going around really slow on the corners uh, from Mac Rides Wild Mouse. Um, yeah, the one at Billen was running really fast when we did oh, it, wasn't was it? that was so fast. There was nothing wild about it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the best. I think it's the temperatures this morning, hence why the wind coaster uh, wasn't operating. But uh, yeah, it was all right getting on it. A cred to cred, we yeah, had nothing spectacular. The areas seem huge compared to any other Lego land I've been to before. And yeah, I like this feature over here. You can stand on these. And yeah, the old mate noises, which is quite cool. There you go, as you go across. <laughs> we are a million attractions after all. There you go. Oh, look at this, this is a throwback. You remember it was when uh, Windsor had this? Yeah, it got removed recently. Yeah, up the top by the start of the park. Yeah, they took it out where the Ferrari build and races now. Oh, he moves as well. That's great. Great thing about Legoland, lots of flat rides. Yeah, it's in a great position. You've got two of these. I mean, with it being a pretty quiet day, and you got one in operation. Yeah, these are quite cool. A little throwback to the old squid server color scheme at Legoland Windsor. Obviously, it's Hydra's challenge now as part of Mythica. Oh, look at this. So we're making our way now into Lego Atlantis by Sea Life. And yeah, in Windsor, this is a ride. Here, I think it's a walkthrough aquarium instead of the ride itself, but we'll find out. So we queued up for a few minutes outside and then yeah, it was brought into a room where we watched a video for about three minutes. Yeah, I think it'd be better off just getting rid of that because then you can just walk straight into the aquarium itself and that's the main event that people want to see. Yeah, the video is quite poor quality as well. Well, this is great in here. Look at the theming. Really good. And then you've got all the Lego models. And the actual aquarium as well. See, instead of it being a ride, it's a walkthrough. Looks like we've got an ocean tunnel down there too. <laughs> Another view and window just here. <laughs> Look at these up here. <laughs> Remind me of shot a bit of reef back at Alton Towers in here. Yeah, the theming is excellent. Loads of fish to see in here. Makes it having all the Lego models inside the tanks as well. Look at him. It looks massive. I mean, obviously they use that kind of reflective glass in here, but it still looks big. Look at the rays. Very impressive. Into the main tunnel just here. Ocean tank. Yeah, they've got quite a few buttons that play audio. Is it interactive? Nice and warm in here as well, which we really appreciate on a cold day. Another nice view looking into the main tank. Yeah, I don't think this one's got a reflective on, so yeah, you get more of an idea on the actual size of the fish. Great setup though, that, having the main window on that side, two on either side, and then the tunnel. Yeah, we were opens up then into some touch pools, like the closed at the moment though, and a few other smaller tanks to see as well. It's quite a nice water through, mostly the main tank there in the middle. Yeah, worth coming to see. Love just coming to these and seeing all the differences. Back outside then now, we've got Albert Einstein just over here, which is quite nice. And there's a cocktail bar at Legoland. That's quite interesting. I mean, it is closed, yeah, cocktail bar. But just over here, instead of the spinning spider, you got a very different looking spinning cups ride. I'll tell you what, the theming on this is excellent. Yeah, I really like this. All undercover as well, which is good for the weather. And yeah, look at the theming on there. I think that looks really good. Continuing on then, walking around the park, and we're here in Lego City now. You got the Harbour Cruise, the driving school, and the restaurants and market hall down there at the back. Yeah, here's the boat ride. There's the Girls Last Skyfly in the back as well. I think this looks a bit basic. Could definitely do with some more theming around or even some landscaping on the version of Windsor. You know, you go around the little islands and there's a bit more to look at. Yeah, this is pretty basic around here. Looking forward to Miniland later and we keep checking the app for the wind coaster. We have nothing yet. Like I say, it's going to be 13 degrees after like 12, 1 o'clock. So yeah, we should be fine this afternoon. Hope so anyway. <laughs> That's our main reason for coming. Also seeing the park for the first time is great. A little plane ride. 
Yeah, you've got the Market Hall restaurant. So what we've noticed about food options here, you've got like a lot of different options around the park, which is good. Yeah, it looks very different to back home, a lot more kind of choice and variety. That's very nicely themed. Doesn't look like it's open yet though. Quite a lot of pumpkins around the park for Halloween as well. I love seeing pumpkins around the park. It's my favourite time of the year. Well, we're just about to get some food, but uh, they're not open until 12, are they? They're not, so I've got something that we can eat. Chocolate Santa. <laughs> <laughs> we literally went to Aldi around the corner this morning and picked him up. Was it like one euro? Yeah, it was like one euro 20 cents. Like, amazing, what a bargain. Wow. We're going to crack Santa open. Yeah, we will. Never too early for a chocolate Santa. I mean, we're going to be in November there soon. There he is. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Look at the little car wash just over there for the driving school. Yeah, it's not open though. I'm not too sure why. I'll tell you what though, this chocolate Santa, Charlotte. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, here's a look over at the driving school around at the side. Again, it's not got loads of theming around. Yeah, another massive area. The pathways are really wide in this park. And now there's a look at the Gerslar Skyfly over there. Feels weird seeing one of these in a Lego park. Yeah, gonna give this a go. Mini driving schools open off to the side. Yeah, all the big buildings around here. Very nice, that like the Lego factory that we saw on the website when we were looking. I think it could be. The little cars just over here. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, here's the Skyfly over here what's really weird is it's themed to ninjago and the ninjago area is at the other side of the park i don't know why they didn't put this in in front of the dark ride that seems a bit weird yeah flying ninjago this would be a nice addition to windsor though not too sure if they get away with it with the height limitations but yeah here we go hmm, wonder why they didn't put it in the ninjago area still it's quite nicely themed just would have preferred if it was all in the same part you know Oh, we just saw the train about to leave, so I thought before going on the Girls' Last Skyfly, jump on the train just there. Have a little ride round. That doesn't look too busy though. Just spinning Ninjago, or flying Ninjago, as it's called. Oh, it's fast. Let's see where this takes us. Maybe it'll go round the side of Miniline, I'm not too sure. I love mini lines, so I'm excited to see this one. Welcome aboard to the Legoland Express. For your own safety, please remain seated throughout the entire ride. That's the Burj Khalifa. Arms and legs inside the train at all times. For hygiene reasons, I would kindly ask you not to eat during the ride. And now, I would like to start our big tour and wish you a pleasant journey. I like how it takes you around the edge of Miniland, kind of similar to Billen. It's like a little Halloween walk through there with all the skeletons. That there are more than 23 million Lego bricks in Miniland. And yeah, all the announcements and signage is in German and English. Or the port of Hamburg to St. Mark's Square in Venice, or the Frankfurt skyline. In many seasons, you can actively participate. Come fair! Hey, have a closer look at that later. That looks good. Got an inverting pirate ship. Hey, here links can you eure Reise durch den Lego Extreme Bereich starten. Direkt neben der faszinierenden Unterwasserwelle der Ninjago Helden. Look here. On your left, you can start your journey through the Lego Extreme area. Right next to the fascinating underwater world of Legoland Atlantis by Sea Life, you can access the adventure area Lego Ninjago World. The wide, large Ninjago. <laughs> and let you experience cool 360 degree somersaults and the push of a button on the 4D experience. Lego Ninjago the Ride. Lego Ninjago the Ride. There you go. <laughs> with your Ninjago hero. Ninjago. Using flashes of light. I don't think this guy got the brief. And jets of ice. I've seen quite a few play areas throughout this park. 
We just go for the little ones. Looks like they're going on the train from busy days. Yeah, in this building we've got like some sort of Lego factory tour. I don't think it's a ride, it's a walkthrough. See, so I'll have to check that out. We're going back about house now. This could do with a bit of theming. Well, here's me saying that you've only got three rides that go upside down. There's actually four. Well, technically more if you count all these individual robo arms. Look at this. Didn't realise they had these here. There you go, all in a building. Very expensive ride systems. Yeah, they've got loads of them in there. How cool is that? Yeah, I remember Billund had these. Oh, that is really cool seeing them all together. <laughs> That's quite a good scene there with his shepherd and his sheep just there, made out of bushes and Lego. A little look at the dragon coaster over there. It's a zero force coaster, so it's massive this one. Look at the lift hill. We'll head on there this afternoon as well. At Deutschland Resort. Cooking your lunch there, Charlotte. Yeah, I think it is. Back to the station. Nice ride that was. Enjoyed it, especially like going past the Rebel Arms. Fantastic ride there on the Legoland Express. And yeah, we've got to give this a go, haven't we? Flying Ninjago, advertised 20 minutes, but it doesn't look that busy to me. A couple of cycles just there. Seems like they're loading it up quite fast as well. Operations have been pretty good from what we've seen so far. Wouldn't fancy waiting in this big cattle pen queue line though. Yeah, it's very weird how this isn't in the Ninjago area. Yeah, let's go and give it a ride. I love the Ninjago music. See you when we come off. I've got to say, the guy operating that was doing an amazing job. He was on his own on there and he had to go around and check all 12 seats and he was getting it sent out very fast, wasn't he? He was doing that so fast, so big shout out to him. Yeah, he was doing a great job. He was on the front row of that too. I had probably about 25, 30 spins on there. I didn't have any, I was just taking in the view. Oh yeah, there's a bit of a breeze in the air, so it was good. I think the crowd were watching in amazement. They'd never <laughs> seen anybody going so fast on one, I don't think. It all depends on the breeze really, but uh, yeah, that was really good. I enjoyed that. Quite weird going on such a ride like that in a Lego park. We made our way then round into that marketplace restaurant and yeah look at this the presentation is awesome like you wouldn't get this back at Aramark would you in the UK I mean that is brilliant five euros eighty for all these crisscross fries there is loads there like but I just wanted to show you the presentation yeah lots of choice in here for meals and pretty reasonable pricing actually especially for that presentation. Oh they were really nice I enjoyed those the portion was massive as well for five euros there's another look at the train. Enjoyed our ride on there too. And yeah, we're gonna go and check out this factory just over here now. Yeah, it looks like some sort of walkthrough. We're gonna go and have a look at that. Look at the building for it. Oh, it looks fantastic. There's the dragon behind it too. We'll get on there this afternoon. Still nothing on the wing coast. I'm not too worried yet though. Like the lady did say, oh, a couple of hours, let it warm up. So it's saying just gone like 12.30. Let's go and check this out, the factory. Do so you just watch a short movie before coming in? And yeah, here's a look in the Lego factory. I think this is really cool. All the minifigures, you got like these big tubs of Lego all the way around, the boxes of all the different bricks over on the side. I wonder if there's actually bricks in there. Maybe they use those for Miniland and building the different models. This is really cool. We can go downstairs. There's a shop. Oh, it looks a bit down there at the end as well. We'll come in. Let's head downstairs. I think normally you'd see the process of how bricks are made, but yeah, it's out of order. Last year though, when we went to Billund, we actually went to the Lego brick house in Billund itself, away from Legoland. And yeah, that was fantastic. We covered it actually over on the Sandbrook Adventures. Yeah, these are definitely all real bricks in here. So I reckon when they're building new things for Miniland, they come in here and get them. Like you can see like pictures of them all and the writing on the side. Yeah, there's something similar to this in Windsor, but obviously it's not set up like a factory. <laughs> That's cool. Like this. Yeah, this is very different. You like it? Yeah, this is really cool. Just a bit quirky. Like when I was a kid, I'd have like, loved this. Probably like, geeking out over it all. That's millions of bricks in here. There's a lot. 
bits of machinery. Yeah, shame the machinery's not working. Yeah, we saw this on the website and thought, oh, we've definitely got to go and have a look in here. It's a bit different. Oh, this is cool. So it's the stages of making a minifigure. Oh, and it shows you it all the way down. Oh, yeah, that's very different. Oh, I like that. It's something a bit different. Then you see the end result. And then they get took off at the end. Down here. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Got some more heavy machinery in here. Quite a few different interactives as well. What do they do? That reveals more information on the screens there. Now that looks a bit, yeah, quite quirky. Alvida's in. And then you exit into a big gift shop. Look at all these. Oh, so you can buy like the individual bricks in here. There we go, nine euros 90 for 100 grams. It's like a pick and mix for Lego. This is cool. So of course, Lego do the roller coaster sets, but you can actually buy all the track pieces here individually, which is awesome. So you can make your own coaster design. Like I've not seen like that before. I said back home it'd be good if they did this. But yeah, that's awesome. Literally all the little sections. That's one of the highlights of any Legoland park I've ever seen in there. I really enjoyed that. Like at the end, getting all those unique bits of Lego and filling a bag and you can take them away with you. Yeah, they had scales around as well, so you can kind of weigh as you go and then make sure you get any money's worth out of the bag. But yeah, selling all the individual pieces in there. Uh, there was all like horses and stuff as well, yeah, wasn't there? Yeah, there was just so much in there. But the good thing about having the weigh is you don't get to the till and be like, oh my God, look how much I've spent. <laughs> I love that. I'm tempted to buy some coaster track for back home. So here's a look at Power Builder. We went through here on the train earlier through the tunnel. These are all the robo arms. And they've actually got a Kuka robo arm just out here with the minifigures on, like a mini one. That's cool. Let's go and have a look inside. Robo arms are some of the most expensive flat rides you can buy. See how they've got loads in here. Look at them all all the way around. And here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that Alton Towers had plans to do something similar to this. It was actually gonna go in the black hole tent and they decided on taking the tent out and building the Smiler. Did you know that, Charlotte? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, and there's some concept art in the Alton Towers archives that I saw when I worked there. And it was a setup like this uh, inside the black hole tent. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. See, there was one of these at Legoland Billum, but didn't get to do it because it was really busy. So I'd like to try and get on this. It looks all right. about five minutes there for the robo arms and Charlotte came on. So you can actually be shocked at this. I knew that Sean was gonna go for level five, so I had my own and went for level one. <laughs> yeah, it was still pretty forceful for you. I quite enjoyed it, it was quite intense. Yeah, the cycle was only about 30 seconds, but I did really enjoy that. They've got 10 of these Cougar robo arms, very expensive rides, really good setup, and that's gotta be the most intense ride in a Legoland park. Uh, setting five I had, which was really good. You get the choice at the start if you want to go one to five. Um, so you go for a mid-range if you want here too, uh, but I went straight in for five. It was going upside down, flipping all directions. It was really good, that was. Even the one was quite intense. I was still going upside down. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, you wanna have the five setting. It's actually got a higher height restriction of 1.4 meters as well. Uh, but that was really good. I enjoyed that a lot. So you got two sets of five. They're not operating these ones because it's a quiet day. You know, they've got this big viewing area up here as well. This is great in here and it's nice and warm too. The good news is Maximus has just opened. 10 minute wait according to the app. So we're gonna make our way back down there to Mythica now. Here we go. I am so excited to ride this Maximus. The Guardian's flight, look at this. Wow, over the entrance. I'm really looking forward to it. Just because it's a unique PM coaster. Like, very excited. The lift hill is only 55 foot tall. And yet, it is a full circuit layout, two inversions. And it actually can run two trains as well. I think it maybe is on one today. But yeah, like, I'm really impressed by the look of this. 
Just excited to see how it rides. Looks great, doesn't it? Oh, this looks so cute. I can't wait to get on it. I've always loved my B&M coasters. And yeah, to see B&M trying more family coasters of late um, is good to see. So yeah, let's go make our way into the queue. 10 minute wait. I love the entrance, Maximus. And there he is, the Skyline. What's really good about this, you can actually see him a lot closer. I reckon that is the same size as the one on flight of the Sky Lion, the Flying Theatre in Windsor. But because he's quite high up, you can't see him as well. Whereas here, he's very low down. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, the train design looks awesome with Lego Maximus. Oh, look at that. Wow. Massive. Maybe this is even bigger, actually. Now we're seeing it here. Maybe I think this is quite a lot bigger. Yeah, running just one train by the looks of it. There's the maintenance shed on that side. Look at this, cute little B&M track. Literally feels like we're queuing for Flight of the Sky Lion. By the look of it in here, the music, the lighting, got some models over there and the screens. And yeah, there's the loading area just through there. We've only waited about 10 minutes and here we are in the station. Oh, look at the train design. We'll see it better in a second when it comes back in. We have features a lift hill, 55 foot tall. And yeah, all the detailing in the station itself just here. See so yeah, if you're on the other side, you got the steps and over. Yeah, we'll have to ask to go on the other side, give it a re-ride. Then we'll get some footage from the top looking out over the station. We have 20 riders per train. It has got two, just running one train. Obviously the maintenance shed's just over there. Features the standard B&M vest restraints. And yeah, really excited to get on. Oh, look at Maximus on the front. Let's go and ride and we'll see when we come up. come off our first ride on Maximus here at Legoland Deutschland and that was really good fun and much more forceful actually than we were expecting. Before we share our full review we're going to make the most of it whilst it's open and it's got no queue heading round and giving it another re-ride and we'll go on the other side this time and then we'll talk more about it. Here we are then back round for our second ride. It's lovely and warm in this station and there's a look at the train from up here on the bridge. Operator's cabin just up there. Oh, look at that, it's so cute. Really happy that we've come all this way and managed to get two rides on this coaster. It's intrigued me ever since it was first announced. And it was a really good fun ride for a family roller coaster of a 1.2 height restriction. To offer a ride like that and with two inversions is great in my opinion. That is just excellent. That was such a good fun ride. The little lift deal, the inversions, they've done such a good job and the area as a whole is brilliant. It actually had more force than I was expecting. Uh, I thought with it having a quite a small drop, it's not going to build up that much speed. Just over 30 miles an hour is the top speed of Maximus. It was really good coming down into the helix, then of course the corkscrew, which was definitely the best of the two inversions in my opinion, and then ending with a heartline roll over the entrance. Very similar style to Mandrel Mayhem in a way at Chessington back in the UK, and it's clear that Merlin have done a deal with B&M on these two family coasters. This in my opinion might be controversial, but I actually thought this ride's better than Mandrel Mayhem for me. I completely agree. I think it's just a, such a better layout. Yeah, and it's a full circuit coaster as well. Uh, uh, it 
can run two trains, 20 riders per train. It's got a better capacity, better throughput. And look at it, it's a really nice area. Hey, so colorful, you've got all the rocks that have been done by Universal Rocks. Overall, a great package. And yeah, the ride itself uh, was really enjoyable. It did have a bit of a rattle though. We say that about Mandrel, don't we? I think Mandrel's got a bigger rattle than this. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because, you know, these are smaller B&M coasters. The trains are still quite big. They've got a bit of a rattle. Nothing uncomfortable or anything, but you can just feel a bit of juddering on there. Um, but still, this is an excellent coaster for families. In my opinion, I'd say because of the 1.2 height restriction and having two inversions, got to be one of the best family coasters in the world, in my opinion. I think it's a really nice addition to this park. Oh, and of course, here in Lego Mythica, you've also got the two drop towers over there. Very nice. Yeah, they're identical to those back in Windsor. The play area here, and lots of different models too, including bits and bobs just over there. Hey, we like bits and bobs. I think it's clear to say that what would really make this area the ultimate family experience would be the Flying Theatre, that wouldn't it? That would finish this area off so well. I'd love to see that in the future. It wouldn't surprise me if that's part of the plans in the future to bring the uh, Flying Theatre here. It would be great. I did notice when we was on Maximus a bit of construction going on behind. I don't know if that's related to any expansions or anything, but probably not because obviously they've got uh, something new coming next year, which I'll talk about later in the vlog. Um, but still, yeah, very impressed with this area. The track colour is beautiful as well. And here it comes from this angle. Up into the corkscrew there. This is a nice photo up as well, great placement. And dropping down into the heartline roll. Nice finale before hitting the brake run. Excellent coaster, really nice family ride. And right opposite Lego Mythica. I've actually got this balloon ride over here, yeah, where you stand up and yeah, you get some great views over this part of the park. So you're going to have a ride on here now. Quite a unique attraction. Very short cycle we had there on the balloons and yeah, it wasn't really up to much that. You did get some nice views though, looking out over the wind coaster. But yeah, photography was not allowed on there. Here's a look at the fire academy they've got here and yeah, it's got a different theme. This one, which is quite interesting. Yeah, there you go, Pyramid Rally. We've also got an observation tower. So yeah, we'll go on there shortly and we should be able to film on there. Well, there was no queue for the little fire academy there, so we went on. That was so much fun and we was the winners. We were the only ones on it, that's we why. We still won. They gave me that for free. I love that. Oh. Yeah, this looks like it's the entrance and exit for hotel guests. Yeah, the accommodation looks very nice here. And then let's look at the observation tower. So we're making our way around that way now. <laughs> Making our way now here into Imagination. Big play area off to the right. So much play equipment in this park. Something that I've really noticed about this park is there's so many rides here. It feels like there's more rides in this Legoland park than the others that I've been to. Sign there for a hot dog, I like that. Giraffe there for the basketball, that's pretty cool. But yeah, you got these drop towers where you pull yourself up. You used to have one of these at Windsor, but it was removed. Yeah, they got a few of them here, three. All around there. Yeah, we're gonna head around this way onto this observation tower because I think we'll get some really good views and we'll be able to film on there. Some of your Halloween decor around the park as well. Here we are then, rising up above the park. Oh, that's a great view. And there's the hotel over in the background there. Great shot, Maximus. Yeah, there's that big expansion pad. That'd be great for the flying theatre around there at the back. Here's our look over the park. Really nice location. Look at all the trees, the forest around. Yeah, there's not much around here at all. Very nice. There's Miniland. Yeah, they've got a big theatre down there. Nothing going on at the moment. It looks like it's being used for storage. And yeah, you can actually see construction going on just over there for the new Peppa Pig theme park. Yeah, they're opening a second gate, much like Legoland Florida. It's going to feature the Daddy Pig roller coaster. And yeah, it will be a completely separate theme park to this. So yeah, there'll be two parks here. And there's the area that we had to explore with the dragon, the mini dragon coaster, and also the castle over there. So I'm looking forward to that. Some great views there from the observation tower. Here we're going to go on the Tretemobile just here now. Takes you around this area. We've waited about 15 minutes there as advertised and we're off. 
So yeah, this is one of those. Who remembers the Squirrel Nutty at Alton Towers when you can pedal to make it go faster or you can go slow like this and just let the electricity power out? Or you can go fast over the air tunnels. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Got a giraffe looking at us. Oh there. yeah, literally. Remember Squirrel Nutty when it was like this. Good times. <laughs> Yeah, it's a stunning location for this park. Beautiful. Yeah, right? Really nice. You ready for the drop? Arms in the air. Ah. <laughs> we speed her up. <laughs> Charlotte's getting her exercise in there. And yeah, we've got two more coasters to ride actually. We're going to head round to the big castle area in just a moment. Have a look at Miniland down there. We've still got that area to explore. And just the back of the park, really, like where the Dragon Coaster is. Yeah, it all connects up in a big circle. It's a really nice layout. That's the thing with it being one of the newer Legoland parks, 2002. I say new, that was still like over 20 years ago, but you know, it was well designed with the layout. That was quite good fun. Look at him cutting the hay just up there. You're doing a great job, Mr. Minifigure. Well, walking to the next area of the park, he's playing Harry Potter. <laughs> so yeah, we've got two roller coasters up here. One of them is a Zero Force, and that's the main dragon coaster. We've also got this small little Gerslar family coaster as well. So yeah, of course, we'll get on both of them. Got to get the creds. Look at all the corn around here. Yeah, it's busy. It's advertised at 47 minutes. Like, that's very precise. Doesn't look that busy though. Goes just behind us, two laps special there on Dragon Hunt, and we only waited five minutes, which I'm pleased about. That was uncomfortable, that was certainly fine. It was a bit like a rougher version of Troublesome Trucks back in Thomasland at Drayton Manor in the UK, same manufacturer as well, Gerslauer. Um, yeah, it was all right for a little family coaster. What I've noticed about this park, instead of everything being kind of aimed for younger children, uh, it's got a more broader age range, hasn't it? I think it's so nice to have that mix and not just have smaller rides, you've got a mix for all age groups. Maybe back in the UK with Legoland Windsor, they keep it just for the the really small ones mainly because you've got Chessington just down the road here Merlin don't really own any other parks in the area so really they want to compete with some of the others and offer some bigger attractions yeah I do really like that we've got the main dragon coaster Ooh. to go on now translates to dragon fire this one it's funny how we've got the Harry Potter music playing around here yeah <laughs> they got a license for that uh, here we go let's make our way onto this and yeah it's gonna start with the dark ride scene and then a bigger coaster as you can see down there. This is funny, this. I can't believe they're playing Harry Potter. <laughs> you got some skeletons around here. There's a bit more spooky theming actually around compared to what you get at Brick or Trees at Windsor. Yeah, let's go and have a ride on here. We're going to enter the courtyard, are we down here? All the spiders. Very nice. Yeah, I've noticed lots of food outlets throughout this park as well, which is good. How long's the wait for this? 15 minutes. I'm surprised it's not 51 minutes or something like that based on the last one. This is nice. It's got a bit more of a realistic theme, this one. And yeah, it looks like we've got a Halloween overlay. Disco Dragon. So, oh, with some pieces of moving heads. Halloween overlay. There's the building. Looks like the station's in the same place. And you queue all around here. Yeah, there's no kind of zigzags in these turrets. Love coming and seeing different Lego Land parks. They are fantastic family theme parks.
was definitely the best dragon coaster out of them all, wasn't it? That was excellent. We loved that. I can't believe how big scale that coaster was. <laughs> yeah, it was really good, bigger than I was expecting. I thought, oh, it looks quite big from off ride. And yeah, it really was. So we had the usual dark ride scene, a little bit different in there. Uh, and yeah, with it being the Halloween version, the basin has put loads of disco lights in there. I think I probably just sort of prefer to have seen it and without all of that. But still, it was really good. What took me by surprise was then we did a drop inside um, before then making our way up the lift hill and then coming outside down that pretty big drop. And actually, it had a little bit of force to it for a family coast. That was just excellent. I loved that from start to finish. Yeah, they've got some really good rides in this park. And yeah, I do love, like we said before, how it's more geared to all the children. Just even adults can come here and have a good time. There's four coasters here, uh, which are really good. And then, of course, yeah, you've got the flat rides. You've got four rides that go upside down. All around, really good park. Very impressed with what we're seeing here today. I love all the trees in this part of the park and there's loads of corn as well with it being Halloween. I struggled to get some off-ride shots. There's all corn in the way. There you got the little spinning ride just over here too. And is that a big bear in the middle? Looks like it to me. And yeah, there's another ride just over here. They've got a pony track. And here it is. You can sit on a horse. Jousting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they put all this corn up around here. It looks good. Those are cool. I love how they do this in parks in Europe. Yeah, they've actually got two of these from a capacity point of view. They've got one on this side, another one over there. That other side's closed because it's not busy enough. But yeah, crazy that. We got some rats as big as cats just over here. Look at those. I'm sure these are from like B&M. Uh, I don't think they have B&M over here. Any coasters. Look at this scene. You wouldn't get this back in Windsor. Uh, it's quite nice. It's got a big bubbling cauldron. Oh, there it is. Hey, look at that. Skeletons on the side. That's fantastic. <laughs> Right then, the time has come to explore Miniland. I always say it's the heart of any Legoland park, and it gets me very excited coming to see a new one for the first time. Look at the beautiful castle here. I'd love to see this in Germany. Yeah, it's a few hours drive away from where we are now, uh, but one day I would love to go and see this. It inspired Walt Disney, uh, of course, to build the castle inside the parks. And yeah, like, look at that, stunning. I'd love to go and see the real thing one day here in Germany. Yeah, it's all the little details, and the good thing is with this one, they've actually got lots more Halloween figures. If you saw our vlog a few weeks ago from Legoland Windsor for Brick or Treat, we said how there's not as many Halloween figures around. There is here. Horse and car just going up there in front of the castle. How nice is that? Continuing on here in Germany. Look at this, got a little farm down there. <laughs> I like how it plays old McDonald's farm. Oh, oh no, we've got a fire trucks coming in. Beautiful German buildings around here. I like how you can see into the houses just here. Are they gonna do anything? Oh, he's hoovering up. <laughs> That's cool. So this section is very different here in the middle. You can see you've got lots of tall different buildings from around the world. The Eiffel Tower just over here. That's uh, One World Trade Center. However, <laughs> looks like the antenna is a bit wonky at the top just over there. And yeah, it tells you all the different buildings down here at the bottom and their heights and lots of facts. I think it's quite nice. There it is, the Burj Khalifa, currently the tallest building anywhere in the world. Being to the top of that in Dubai. Hoping to get back to Dubai at some point in the near future. So that'd be nice. Yeah, it's good how it ties you all the facts down there. Way down here to Italy now. <laughs> Charlotte's dancing to the announcement music. <laughs> oh, this is nice. All the boats around there. Wir freuen uns, euch gleich begrüßen zu dürfen und wünschen viel Spaß und gute Unterhaltung. This is nice. An amazing show will start in the Monkey Theater. An amazing show in the Monkey Theater. Yeah, all these buildings are great. Nice bridge over the top there. Yeah, very colourful. I'd like to go to Venice at some point, actually. Over here into Berlin, Germany now. All the buildings. Oh, we got another pumpkin display down there. Someone's dressed as a pumpkin. You see him there in the oh, middle. Yeah. <laughs> Halloween party going on just down there. Yeah, it's what they used to do in Windsor. A few more details around. Hopefully, we'll do that again next year. Soon pull down here big tower over in the middle. What makes Miniland the fact that all these are real trees, but are the tiny, aren't they? But really they look big, if that makes sense. Interactives around. Limousine parts up outside this one. Very pretty, I like this bridge coming up. 
just down here. That looks nice. Oh, I love Mini Land. Oh, you've got the trams running round <laughs> over here too. It's really good. It's quite a large Mini Land actually. Skate park. Skating ride. You got some boats going round. Quite a lot of movement. Trams are good, aren't they? I like those. Bit of construction going on down here. In this part as well. Looks like this has had a lot of refurbishment done lately. Like a lot of the tracks look quite new. Not all this tarmac. Still here in Berlin. Film crew just down there. Not too sure what's going on. Oh, this is beautiful. Monkeys, it's a zoo. Oh, it is a zoo. Oh, this is awesome. Big scale, the Alliance Arena. Just here. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Wow, look at the size of that. Pumpkins versus witches. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't notice Ghost that. Referee. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Welcome to Dusseldorf. Got the castle up there on the hill. Helicopter with some sort of rescue operation going on. We've got a truck coming round. So much happening. Window cleaning up there. Jet bus. Is he going to the airport? put so much effort in with Miniland. I love coming around and seeing them all. And yeah, my favourite Minilands are actually the ones that have got the covers over as well. I think it is nice when they put the covers on. Dubai is all indoors. Florida, they've put a cover over. And yeah, it's quite a nice idea when they do that. Oh, we've got loads of Halloween on this one. We've got the ghosts and pumpkins up there. We've got Dracula, a witch, and yeah, some uh, Frankenstein models down there at the front gone through Frankfurt. Frankfurt for Frankenstein. This is lovely. Here we are in Switzerland. And of course, we're not actually that far from the real Switzerland here. There's a few parks I'd like to do down there at some point, actually. Still so much out there to discover. This is very pretty. Yeah, I'd like to actually see a lot more of Switzerland. Seeing the Matterhorn is a big bucket list of mine. We'll get there at some point in the future. Pumpkin. Oh, this is really nice. Oh, it's a skeleton at the front door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice say you've actually got the real train that goes round the outside here as well. Cable car up there. Oh, this is lovely. With all these windmills over here, I'd say we're making our way into the Netherlands, wouldn't you? Oh, look at these skeletons just over here. They're having a bath and they've got sunglasses on. Hey, lots of Halloween theming. That is amazing. <laughs> Charlotte Halloween. There's all these dummies <laughs> up in this tree as well. And now we're in Hamburg, Germany. This is the final part of Miniland for us to see. We've got those rides coming up just over here too. Big bananas just there. <laughs> yeah, that wheel just over here looks identical to the one in Miniland at Windsor. Welcome to Hamburg! Hey, look at this. Big fair down by the docks. We've got the wheel over there. We've got the plane ride. We've got a inverting pirate ship. And yeah, the drop tower, which does actually work. So I'm just going to wait for it to uh, operate for us all. Hey, up it goes. All the way over Hamburg. Get ready to drop. Oh, oh. Oh, he's teasing them all. Yeah, it does take quite a while to drop. Oh, it does it? It's not holding up there. And it will drop down. Look at the lighting on there. You got all the boats coming past as well. This building's really nice. Oh! Hey! <laughs> Food stalls. This is great. Oh, look at the showboat over there as well. Very impressed with Miniland. Really enjoyed walking around there, did you, Charlotte? Oh, that was lovely. I really enjoyed it. It's great. Fantastic Miniland. Lots of details and really well kept. And this is the monkey theatre that we heard being advertised. Here you got a family magic show. Right, it's near the end of the day. We've got less than an hour left. And yeah, really, it's just this one more major ride to check out. And I'm going to save it till the end of the day. Looks like I could get quite wet on this. We'll find out. But I'm going to give it a go. So it looks like it's got dark ride scenes. Won't be able to film on this. But I'm going to go and give it a ride.
Oh, well, I've come off, and yeah, you know what? I didn't get too wet on there. I was the only person on the boat. I feel like if you had a full boat, you could probably get wet, because yeah, it was the same sort of ride system as Valhalla. Uh, into main, yeah, the boats were very similar. This one had lap bars, and yeah, you could just see the finale drop um, from outside. Actually, it had a backwards drop with two turntables, some theming, there was like a big spider, and also featured one of Johnny Thunder just up there. Hey, Johnny Thunder, who remembers him from the stunt show at Legoland Windsor? Yeah, it was good getting on there. Some great bits of theming, but yeah, I didn't get wet. I think if you had a full boat there, you could be in for a soaker on that. Oh, um, yeah, it was a pretty good ride. Last part of the day then now, we've done everything we've wanted to here at the park, which has been great. We're just gonna get a couple of re-rides now on the Maximus Wind Coaster, and then we'll uh, wrap up the vlog. Well, anyway, 10 minutes for another ride there on Maximus. Really enjoyed that family coaster. And yeah, before we head out the park, we're just gonna have a look inside the big Lego shop. Always oh, a good sized shop in here, loads of merch. Yeah, lots of similar stuff that you can find back home. Like Maximus just over there, there he is. I love it. Look at the driving school cap just there. 20 euros, woohoo, I got my driving license. <laughs> Legoland Deutschland caps. 20 euros as well. 27.99 for the t-shirts. Yeah, they come in yellow and gray. Yeah, they're quite nice. And yeah, they've also got the Lego boutique clothes shop over there. And in the park we were walking around and we saw they've actually got a Lego outlet store as well. Well, that brings us to the end of our day here for our first ever visit to Legoland Deutschland. We've had a really good day. I do like the Legoland parks a lot. It always excites me seeing different ones, especially for Miniland. But today I was really excited for Maximus. And yeah, I'd say it delivered more than I was expecting. I have loved this park. Out of the three Lego parks that I've done, this is definitely my favourite. Really? Better than Billings yeah, for you? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's got a nice layout with this park. It's packed full of attractions. It's quite large. And also the areas are quite wide. At first I was thinking, oh, does that take away from it a bit? But actually, now it's designed really well. It means it probably copes with crowds great here. It's got lots of filler attractions. The thoughts about the design very well. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it here. Maximus was definitely my highlight though. Oh, I really like the Dragon Coaster I did. That was brilliant. Yeah, that version of the Dragon was fantastic. It really was. That's definitely the best of all the Dragon Coasters. And yeah, with Maximus, really nice addition. 1.2 height restriction, two inversions, and a really well-themed area. I just like them characters a lot as well. With bits and bars, Maximus himself, and yeah, all well, that colour scheme for Mythica. I think it's really nice, and I'd love to see that expanded across more parks. And yeah, in the future, I think the Flying Theatre would fit in well. I thought the factory tour was really good today. Oh, that was brilliant. I dread to think how much Lego is in there. <laughs> yeah, there was so much. And then along with that, you've got all the Robo Arms. I thought that was quite fun, actually, and surprisingly intense as I well. I was on speed one, and that was enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm for speed five, and it was really good. Overall, it's a nice park, couple of dark rides, the water rides, lots of flats, lots of filler rides and yeah i've really enjoyed it here it's a lego park you don't really hear much about so yeah it was nice to come and experience it it was the wind coaster that drew me in here today and uh, yeah we've had a really good time seeing it all the accommodation looks great here too and uh, yeah like i say the building the pepper pig theme park i'd imagine it's going to be a similar one to the uh, legoland florida one that opened a few years ago it's going to feature a coaster and it's actually opposite the park it's completely separate um so yeah i'm sure we'll come back at some point in the future see that and uh, get back on maximus we've got more new parks to experience so the next two days are full of new parks. Next up, we're heading to Skyline Park and also Schwaben Park. Uh, the day after that's here in Germany. So yeah, discovering new parks for the first time. We love it and we can't wait to take you along. But here from Legoland Deutschland, that leaves us with one final thing to say. Get, Get out there and keep on riding. See you tomorrow.